Hey everyone, this is Shay Walker from All Garage Floors, and today is actually a pretty exciting day for us. We're going to show you how to install Swiss Tracks garage tiles in our own garage. Now this won't be a 30 minute long video of you watching me snap together tiles. We wouldn't do that to you. What we will do is share some important tips as well as some tricks that we think that you will find valuable. More importantly is we are going to discuss layout. In other words, should you be starting your garage floor on the left? Should you be starting it on the right? Which direction do you orient the tile before you get started? And how do you line it up with your garage doors? This is where most of the questions arise and we hope to take care of this before you even get started on your project. We're also going to discuss the cutting and trimming of the tiles. We have a very simple method that we've used for years that doesn't cost a lot of money in tools, but we will talk about other ways you can cut the tile that you might want to incorporate yourself. Now, at this point, you may be wondering why we chose Swiss Tracks for our own garage. Well, we're going to tell you that in an upcoming video with a review. However, what we can tell you is that we have always liked Swiss Tracks garage tiles, and when we had a chance to partner up with them, we jumped at the chance. What that means is that we can actually provide you with a discount to save money when you go to purchase your tiles. All you need to do is click on the description down below where you'll find a link and a discount code. Now, we may make a little bit of money on the purchase, but it won't affect the price you pay at all. Now, while you're down there, don't forget to hit the subscribe button right there, and let's get started. So we're going to start out with our very first tip that can save you some possible time and frustration. And that is to inventory the tiles and edge ramps the day you get them. We're still amazed to this day how many people will order some type of garage flooring product and they don't even check the boxes until the day they start their project only to find that they didn't receive something. So you don't want to be that guy. As you can see here, when we received our tiles, we went through and checked to make sure everything was there. Now, we thought for sure that we were missing a couple of items, uh, but it turns out Swiss Tracks is very efficient at the way they pack, so you'll want to open up all your boxes, verify you have the right colors, edge ramps, and so on. Now, while you're at it, we recommend printing up your layout. Now you should have this available to you if you use their floor designer online. And this will help you out. This is like your blueprint when you're assembling the floor so you're not trying to remember exactly what color went where. And as you can see, they have some pretty cool 3D options as well that you can play with when you're designing your floor. For us, we'll show you real quick here. We're going with four different colors. Um, the black is mainly an accent color, but the uh, most of the floor is going to be primarily the Rib Tracks Pro. And then the back of the floor is going to be the Rib Tracks Smooth Pro. Um, this is a newer tile they have out, and uh, we really wanted to give this a shot so we can review all this and get back to you what we really think of these tiles. So now that you know what to check before you get started with your project, uh, we want to show you what we're dealing with here today. Uh, our garage is about 85% complete in terms of its organization, painting and lighting and such, but we're far enough along to start with installing the floor. So what we need to do first off is we have to unload these storage racks and we're going to move everything out onto the driveway along with these loose items that we haven't quite figured out what to do with yet. And then our plan is, as we're installing the floor, we'll bring it, as we get to the back wall here, um, we'll bring the, the tile right up to these cabinets and workbench and toolboxes, refrigerator and such. And once we get to that point, we'll have to unload some of these things. We're going to move it all up onto the floor. 
we'll tile behind it and then move it back. And we're not going to show you that on video because nobody wants to watch that. Um, here's a few other things that we need to move out. No big deal. Now here is one of the tricks that we want to tell you about. Now this is our stem wall. Stem wall is that four to six inch uh, tall piece of concrete that a lot of people have in their garages. Some people have, they look like cement blocks. And we painted it black. And the reason we did that is because black paint does a great job of absorbing light. And it hides a lot of the irregularities you get with these stem walls. And if the inside of your garage is finished off with drywall like ours and painted, it provides a nice contrast as well. We do have some touch up to do afterwards, but no big deal. Now, when you trim your tile up to this, it gives it a really nice finished look. It, it, and I think the reason it looks nice is it just doesn't stand out like it does when it's the unfinished concrete. So this is a great low budget trick to trim off the bottom of your garage. And the product that we used in this particular case is epoxy seal. This is just a one part epoxy paint. It's not a true epoxy, but it adheres well to concrete. And as you can see, what we used is their deep tint base. This is what you'll want to purchase because a deep tint base allows you to tint the paint to any color that you want. In this particular case, Epoxy Seal had a black uh, tint color code, and we purchased this from Lowe's, and they had all the instructions from Epoxy Seal, and it was no additional charge to do so. And so we had them do that, and we started painting around on the base. So now that you learned that trick and what we're dealing with, let's start with the installation of our floor. All right, so let's discuss the Swiss Tracks recommended way for installation. And this is what we're gonna do. Now, when you see your tile, you can see that we have uh, two female looped edges right here, and then you have two male smooth edges, okay? And you have the pegs here that actually on the male side that snap in to the adjacent loop side. So that's how the tile works. So when you go to lay out your floor, ideally, the way you should do it is to have one smooth side facing the garage door right here, and then the other smooth side faces the adjacent wall in this corner. This is the front left corner of our garage, so we're facing the garage doors from the inside. Now there's a couple reasons that you do it this way. And the first is, is that it's going to allow us to install full tiles all the way across the front of the garage and up one side. And what we'll do is we'll lay two or three rows of tiles right here in the front, and then one or two rows up here on the side. It's also going to <laughs> show us how square our garage may be. Um, with construction these days, you never know, but we'll find out. And so uh, you may have to make adjustments for that with the distance that your tile is from one side of the garage because you can't have it pinch in just a little bit or out or when you're assembling the rest of the floor across it won't work okay now the second reason that they like to install it this way has to do with your ramp edge strips if you notice we have female or looped in ramp edge strips and this is preferable and the reason for that is you'll see when it snaps in here the tile actually snaps down on top of those loops so when you're pulling your car in there is no way for this to become unsnapped from the tile this is a preferred method now based on your layout if you have to do something different that's okay the male uh, ramp edges that fit into the female still fit nice and snug. Um, it's just not the preferred method to do it. Now, something else you need to consider with your layout are your side doors or man doors, you know, the doors you can go in and out of your garage other than, than your garage door itself. And 
Some of these doors have a little lip going right across the threshold like ours does and it makes it real easy depending on what side of the garage the door is on. Uh, you can trim the tile right up to that lip. But other garages like our past garage didn't have that. The concrete went right out to the patio that was on the side of the garage right there. And so when that happens, it may require that you have to shift your tile a different way, okay, in order to use your, your ramp edge strip just for that door itself. Because if you can use ramp edge strips, it's a much cleaner looking install. But when you do that, it may require that you shift your floor over a few inches one side or the other for these ramp edges to match up where you want them to be. And when you do that, it may require an extra row of tiles along both sides that you're gonna have to trim. So those are considerations that you have when you're designing your floor. All right, so we just showed you how we're gonna start, which is facing the garage door and to the left. But it may be more advantageous for you to start on the right hand side of your garage as you're facing the door. And if that's how you want to start, there's a particular way you need to orient your tile. And so you need to be aware of this and we're going to show you why. We didn't discuss it why we were doing it on the left hand side, but we're going to do it here on the right and you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So if we're starting on the right, we still want to have the smooth male peg side towards the door but we also want the smooth male peg side to the right this time up against the wall since it's on the right. And then the same thing, when we go to lay the tiles down, we're following that same orientation. I have a ramp edge strip in here so you can get a better idea. And you can see how it goes right up there and I just drop the tile in place. The reason it was easy to drop the tile in place is because the female looped sides are all facing up. So now when I go to put in this one, I have my smooth male peg, smooth male peg to the right. It drops right in on top of the tile. Now when I go to do the corner, if you notice, we have our female loops on both sides here. And that makes it real easy because it's just going to drop in. And pun intended, it makes assembling the tile a snap. So now, let me show you what you don't want to do. Let's say for some reason, you go to assemble it and you have your smooth male peg side facing the door, but your female edges facing the wall. Now when I go to put in the one next to it, you'll notice the female edge has to go to the right. And what I have to do is I have to lift up this silver tile to get it in. You're thinking, okay, well that's not that big a deal. Particularly when I go to assemble this one, I have the female side facing the wall just like the silver one there. And so it drops in okay. I'm only doing one side. Now, when I go to put in this black one here, I have the female side facing up here, but the male side is on here. And so I have to orient the tile like so, and the problem is I can't drop it in because this side has to go under this tile, but on top of the other one, like this. And this makes it a real pain to get it in there. You can, there we go. All right, so if you do this, you're gonna be frustrated before you get halfway through with your garage and it's gonna take you forever. It's even worse if we rotated it 90 more degrees the other way. So you don't wanna do that. So there's a method to the madness of aligning these tiles this particular way. 
So we're gonna start assembling ours and you'll notice in the video as we're doing it, how all of the tiles just drop right in place and snap in. So it makes it real easy. Okay, now let's take a look what we've done here. As you can see, we have two full rows going right across the front. And if we look close, I have the ramp edges snapped in. I'm not doing any trimming yet. I'm just using all whole pieces. And if you notice, they're getting much closer to the door over here. And then as we walk this way to the other side of the garage, they've spaced out a little bit. Now, over in this area, I'm just using whole tiles so we don't do any trimming yet. You can see the area where I'll have to trim tiles to go around this water conditioner, but I have the red tiles up here. Now this is a good example of why we like painting the stem walls black because just glancing at this, you can't tell how close it is to the wall. Now if I zoom up here real close, if I can, well this camera is not even picking it up. We're about three quarters of an inch from the wall. <laughs> That's hard to see. And as we go up this way, we're tight up against the wall right here. So we're tight up against the wall here and over in this far corner, we were getting a little tighter towards the door than we were here. So that tells me what I was afraid of, and that is that this corner here is not square. It's not 90 degrees. It's actually a little bit less. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push the floor up against the base of the garage doors, just to where they're almost touching the little rubber pads down there. And then we're gonna have to shift it a little bit to the right in this direction so we can provide a little bit of clearance up here. Now, one thing we didn't talk about with the self draining style of tile like this is that they don't expand nearly as much as the solid top tiles. So you don't have to worry about expansion as much so you still don't want to have a really tight fit, but you want to leave yourself ideally at least close to a quarter of an inch. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to shift this to see how it lines up. I have my helper here. This is my wife, Nancy, and here's how we're going to do it. All right, so let's shift it a little bit this way. All right. And now let's push it up towards the door. And how do we look? Okay, so we have more space than I thought over here. 
we're good up against our door, so now we're just going to move it a little bit in this direction. Okay, you ready? And go. That'll do it. After that, you can see where we have our ramp edge. It's just touching the seal there for the garage door. And it goes like this all the way across. It's not absolutely perfect, and that's okay. And that just has to do with the doors and construction and such. Now, if we look over here, we have, if that focuses in, we're about a good inch and a quarter at this corner from the wall. And then as we run up here, we're almost touching it. So we're fine with that. And now what we're gonna do, now that it's all squared up with the front doors, is we're gonna start assembling all the whole pieces through the rest of the floor. Now, over here we have left of a stand for a water heater. The previous owner put in a tankless, which you can see right here. And one of my projects is I'm gonna rip this out and patch up the drywall and such so we have more room. And that's why we have some extra black tiles here. Now this is our black border and what we'll be Installing next is the rib track smooth. So here we go, these are all our whole pieces we have in of the Rib Track Smooth Pro. I'm gonna try and get a close shot so you can see the difference between the Rib Tracks Pro and the Rib Track Smooth Pro. And it goes all the way up like so. These are all the whole pieces that we could put in and so now our next step is to unload the cabinets, pull them on up along with the refrigerator there, and uh, then we'll trim everything in and move it back. 
Okay, so now we want to talk about cutting the tile. And there's a variety of tools that you can use when you do this. Now, in our particular case, we're going to use a jigsaw, which we'll get into here in just a moment. Uh, you can also use a battery-operated uh, smaller circular saw. Those work real well. You can also use a table saw when you're cutting the tile. Now, there are tile cutters that are available, but they're very expensive. Um, good luck trying to find one that you can rent. And last time I checked, they were well over $600. And all they do is they cut a straight line. In our particular case, most of our cuts are gonna be straight lines, but we do have some angles and we have a uh, circle to cut for our water conditioner. So this is why we're gonna use the jigsaw. Now the key with all your circular saws, jigsaws and such is that you wanna use a fine tooth blade. You don't wanna use a jagged uh, rough cut blade or a fast cut blade or something like that. Um, the finer you, the blade, the better off you are. Now in our particular case, what we did, because we like really straight lines, is we made a fence for our jigsaw right here. So we took measurements for over here on the right hand side, and we're actually going to do two pieces of tile at a time. And we set it up with a clamp here, and as you can see, we have another tile over here so we can clamp over there. That way we have a nice unobstructed path all the way across. So we're going to cut it right now. And there we go. It's a little bit jerky when you have the, uh, the Rib Tracks Pro here, simply because you have gaps that the blade's going through. And now you can see we have a nice straight cut and we're gonna snap it in over here. And there we go, that worked out really nice. This is the most difficult thing we have to work around right here is this water conditioner. Um, I could have cut the pipe and uh, lifted it back up and such, and I've done things like this before, but it just adds so much more time and hassle to it that I think I'd just rather cut the tile around it. So. What I did is I made a template, you can see right here with some cardboard, and um, using a square right here to get some general measurements for distance and such. I used this template. and connected my two pieces of tile together and hopefully you can see the lines right there. And that's what I'm gonna follow. That's why we're using a jigsaw. Now it's not gonna be absolutely perfect, but that is the cut we're gonna make. But I will separate the tiles and do one side at a time. All right, so I have it clamped onto our board here and I have it outlined in a Sharpie and we're gonna start our cuts. And right now, I just want to make sure I cut right at the exact spot as the other one.
Okay. So that goes like that. This one goes like this. That's what we look like. So now let's go see how it looks. Okay, so we went ahead and cut the pearl silver as well. And it came out pretty good actually. Just had one little slip. I think the tape measure slipped right here. <laughs> um, I do have an extra red tile though. And so once we're completely done with the floor, I'll probably come back and get that that one right there, but the rest came out really good. I'm happy with it. Um, making a template definitely worked. So we will finish uh, trimming out our ramp edges here. And then the, uh, the rest of the sidewall up over there, and then we'll see how our floor looks. And here's the moment I think we all have been waiting for, and that is the complete installation of our Swiss Tracks garage tile in our three car garage. And we think it has turned out absolutely fantastic. We already had some neighbors up here checking it out, wanting to know what we were doing and they're already wanting to know where they can buy this. Uh, this is our water heater stand uh, restoration project that I told you about earlier. We were able to get some things organized a little bit more but overall, we we're very happy with the way this turned out. Now I wanted to show you over here, I'm gonna come up a little closer. This is the, the stem wall painted black and you can see how nice that really looks. It's, it's a, just a fantastic low budget option for trimming in your stem walls, it looks great. And of course, this is our Rib Track Smooth Pro. My wife, Nancy, has already commented how much she likes it. She loves the color contrast with our black cabinets and such. And then if I show you over here, you can see how our ramp edge strips are all trimmed in now. And of course, this is gonna be a future project we'll update you with where we're gonna paint this part of the stem wall in concrete black. We may trim that in with uh, some more Swiss tracks tile, I'm not sure. But overall, we're extremely happy with the way this looks and the way it turned out. And so what we wanna do next is go over some last minute tips for you. Talk a little bit about concrete prep, which we really didn't do initially. And uh, also tell you how to save some money on Swiss Tracks tile. So now that you saw how well our floor turned out, we wanna share with you some important tips and information that will help you out with your own installation. Now the first one that we want to cover is concrete prep. You may have noticed that we haven't discussed it until this point and that's simply because we overlooked it. It's that simple. All that's required is to sweep out the floor and that's exactly what we did. When we moved everything out onto the driveway, we swept it, we vacuumed a couple areas and that was it. If you have any heavy grease areas, we do recommend that you degrease that first but other than that, you're okay. If you have a floor with some mild pitting and spalling, that's okay as well. The tile will lay right over the top of it. Now, another topic that we want to discuss is the proper distance to keep the tiles from the walls and immovable objects. Now, an example of an immovable object may be a steel support pole, or maybe heavy cabinets that you're gonna trim around instead of pulling them up to the floor and trimming the tile up and moving them back and so on. Now Swiss Tracks says for their Rib Tracks Pro and Rib Tracks Smooth Pro that you wanna keep a minimum quarter inch distance from the walls. All other tiles in their lineup is a minimum one half inch difference. Now there's some information out there that we don't really agree with 
um, that you may decide to follow, and that is people say that they like to trim their tiles up tight against the walls. The reason you want to think twice about that is that unless you live in an area of the country where you don't have real large temperature swings or you plan on keeping your doors closed all the time, um, you're running a risk of the tiles expanding just a little bit and then your floor buckling. So we don't recommend following that advice, but that's up to you. Now, when you're snapping all your tiles in, do all the whole pieces first. Don't snap tiles in, do trimming, and then snap tiles and trim. The reason for that is you may get partway through your floor and realize you need to shift it one way or another just a little bit. And if you already started trimming tiles, it's going to throw you off and cost you some money. Now that brings up the other subject that we want to talk about, and that is pay close attention to your cutting. And I don't mean the measure twice cut once rule, which you should be following anyways. What I'm referring to is how your tile is laid out when you go to make your cut. Because they always look the same no matter how you turn them, it's easy to end up cutting the wrong side. And I don't think I've had a floor yet in all the installations I've done where I haven't done that at least once. I've done it twice on a couple floors and I did do it once on this floor. You make the cut, you go to snap it in and you realize you cut the wrong side. So pay close attention to that. Now, that brings up another subject, and that is we highly recommend when you're ordering your floor that you get an additional two tiles for each color choice that you have. And the reason for that is that if you do mess up a cut for whatever reason, you have one as a backup. The second one is for the future in case you ever damage a tile. You can store it away, you damage that tile, you have one on hand, it's real easy to pop the damaged one out, put the new one in, and you're done. Now, don't throw away your scrap until you're completely done trimming. The reason for that, and a lot of people aren't aware of this, this neat little trick, is that if you're lining up your floor uh, the way it's recommended, where you have your male pegs up front, that means your female pegs are going to be in the back. And nine times out of ten, you are trimming the tiles in the back like we did to fit. Now what you can do if you like is you can take that scrap that's left over and most of the time what you can do is fill in any little small gaps in the front with that because you have the female side left over which will snap into the male pegs up front. And that's a little trick that can save you some money on the tiles. So hold on to everything before you throw it away because you actually may be able to use that scrap. Now, we told you at the beginning, and in case you missed that, we can actually save you money on the purchase of Swiss Trax tiles. Down below in the description there, we actually have a link and a discount code that you can use when you go to purchase your product. So make sure to use that. And while you're down there, please don't forget to subscribe so you can see our upcoming videos on this floor. This isn't a show queen garage. We actually work on our vehicles and do different things here so you can see what we put this floor through. And if you have any questions, visit us on our website or feel free to ask in the comment sections down below. We actually monitor them and we're helping people out all the time. So good luck with your installation and thanks for watching.